Oh, I'm just excited to be back with you on this third Sunday for Marriage Fellowship Enrichment. And uh, if you remember last week, we were talking last month, we, we brought a coat up here and we were trying to get uh, uh, First Lady and I, we was trying to show you that at the altar, your spirit man comes together. Two spirits come together at the altar. But what happens is the soul is struggling, trying to become one. And so just like we were in one coat trying to operate and walk together, we have to learn. We have to learn in our marriage relationships. We have to learn how to walk together. We have to learn how to come together in our soul. That's in our thinking, in our emotions, and thinking emotions, and in our actions. And so it takes a lifetime to be able to pull that, to pull that off. But this is the thing about, about that. You should be, every, every, every month, every day of your married life, you should be moving forward. You should be moving toward uh, becoming one. You should be moving forward to enjoying becoming one. You should be moving forward uh, to, to, to better things, to greater things, creating your own Garden of Eden here on the earth in Montgomery or wherever you live. We, we should be able to be, we should come together. The more you come together, the more you love, the more you understand, the more you work together, the better life you're going to have. And, 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 and when the Bible says, Jesus said that I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly, he, he talking about, he's not just talking about the Christians, he's talking about married couples also. That there are so many scriptures in the Bible that you can use. If you look at it and let God give you illumination and revelation, he's talking straight and pointing straight to married couples. And so I want to I want I want to remind you and, and and hopefully that you remember this. You belong to each other. You belong to each other. You belong to one another. You belong to one another. And so uh, I'm going to here again, we're going to reemphasize the big overcoat represents two people coming together in their soul life. Their souls are still in the process of process of unifying, merging. So when you get married, you're still in the process in your soulish mind, emotions, and will in the process of unifying, you're merging, okay? And you're merging, you're trying to become one in practice, one in your physical life together. So trying, you're trying to think, maneuver, walk, work together, operate as one. You're trying to solve problems and move forward. And it's a challenge while <laughs> trying to be oneself. It's a challenge. However, both individuals have to learn how to manage wearing the coat or manage being one soul together while they attempt to accomplish, accomplish goals in life. After marriage, you are no longer your own person. You now belong to each other. I now must take you to first take you to First Corinthians chapter seven. It talks about several things. It talks about divorce and it talks about uh, being single and so on and so forth. In this chapter, we want to lift out what it talks about concerning marriage. So we're going to be in the Amplified, the classic Amplified. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 through 5, and then verse 12 through 16. Paul starts off, he says, Now as the matter of which you wrote me, it is well, and by that I mean uh, advantageous, expedient, profitable, and wholesome for a man not to touch a woman, to cohabitate with her. That means to live in sin, shack up, but to remain unmarried. So he says, look, uh, for you single folks, it, it's, you, you, it's sin for you to be shacking up and living together like married folk. So don't, if you're single, you can't be acting like you're married. You can't do that. And then he flips the, the script and he starts talking about how we should be when we are married. Okay. So here's the thing. And let me tell you something. I just got out of this. When you're single, baby, enjoy your singleness. Because when you get married, everything changes. Everything changes in every way, in every form, in every fashion. It's a good thing if you do it God's way, if you do it the scripture way. But I need you to understand why you're single, have your freedom, baby. Because I'm getting ready to teach you something. God's getting ready to tell you something that maybe you realize and you didn't realize. So while you're single, uh, this is a good time. You know, single folks really need to be hearing this message right here. So they can, so they can make sure <laughs> that, they, 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 uh, that they're ready. That they're ready. He says, so, so he goes on, he says, verse, verse 2 says, But because of the temptation to impurity and to avoid immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Each man have his what? own wife and each woman have her own husband 
All right. Now I could go another direction with that to make sure that we understand that God is about husband and wife and not he's about Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. I could go a whole nother route, but we're not going there today. Verse three says the husband should give to his wife her congenital, her conjugal, conjugal, her conjugal rights. Conjugal rights means refers to anything that is connected to marriage or the union of spouses. So the husband should give his wife con congenital rights. Conjugal rights, all right? And the wife should do likewise, all right? Look at this. It says, the husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, goodwill. This is what we got to practice now. Kindness. And what is due her as his wife. So that, so everything that this left out, Whatever is due her as his wife, that's what he is to give to her. Uh -huh. Everything, baby. Every, every, everything, 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 everything. You still want to be married? Everything. No, this ain't yours. No, 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 no. This is mine. Nope. Everything, baby. My account. Nope. Everything. My toys. Nope, everything. She ought to be able to drive whatever you drive. Everything. Everything. And what is your attitude? What should your attitude be about giving her everything? Likewise, too, the wife, the same way, husband. What should your attitude do? Goodwill. Kindness. Hmm? Okay. So, so let's look at this. He, he says, good will, kindness, and what is due to her, and likewise the wife to her husband. So you got to give your husband. I can't get no help right now. Everything. Everything. Oh, Lord. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. That's why I said we, we probably need to be talking to single folks because now you've got to give up everything for each other. Let me tell you something while you're young, while you're young. I'm not, look, I'm not, I'm not hating on the, 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 the elite couples. I'm not hating on them. But while you're young, you need to understand this and try to practice this because when you get a certain age, you ain't going to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Short of a miracle, you ain't going to be able to do it. You, you're just not going to be able to do it. You're not going to do it. I see it on some people's face when I'm teaching and talking and preaching and stuff. You know, they, they be like, Pastor, oh, yes, Pastor, yes, Pastor, yes, Pastor. I love it. Oh, man, good word. Oh, man. Boy, I'm talking about I'm just excited. Boy, you on fire. You told the truth. I see it in their eyes. When they leave this place, they ain't going to practice none of that. They going back to what daddy showed them, what mama told them. They going back to what works in their house. They going back to separate but equal. They going back to all of that stuff. And the word of God just came to deliver you. The Lord of God just came to set you free. The word of God just came to create in you your own garden of Eden. And you rejected it because you couldn't see it because of unbelief. You heard the word, but you didn't believe. What causes unbelief? That old stinking thinking, that old habits and way of life. And that's why you need to quit talking about your mom and your dad more than you talk about God. Because just because they was your mom and dad don't mean they did everything right. And it sure enough don't mean that they did everything according to the word of God. Now, let me ask you a question. Who's going to be potentate? Who's going to be preeminent in your life? Is it going to be God? Is it going to be your parents? Is it going to be the word of God or what they have taught you and said to you? What? What, what you going to believe? And that's part of your problem. Oh, I think I went too far there, too. Let me move on. He says, and, and, and so now he gets personal. Get real personal now. He says, four, verse 4, for the wife does not have 
exclusive authority and control of her, over her own body. Let me see what we're talking about here. We're talking about you now belong to each other. Oh, so for the wife does not have exclusive authority and control of her own body, but the husband has his rights. Likewise, also the husband does not have exclusive authority and control over his body, but the wife has her rights. Oh, well, shut the front door. You mean to tell me that when we got married, I no longer have right over my body? Are you kidding me right now? Ooh, Jesus. I don't really know what I'm going to do. I don't know how to tell myself what to do. I don't know sometimes my own direction. I'm going to let this man tell me. He, he looked like he don't know what he. She looked like she done lost it. She, she. Oh. Paul says, "I will to do it, but how to perform it? I can't." Over Romans chapter seven, he said, "The things I will to do and want to do." I don't do and things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. He says, I, uh, who's going to deliver me from the body of this death? Who in the world going to deliver me now from this relationship? Yeah. Baby, you got to read your Bible. You got to understand that a reason why we're, a reason why we're in trouble, we're, we're dealing with a lot of stuff and issues that we shouldn't be dealing with because we don't read the word. And then when we read the word, we don't believe it. And then when we believe it, we don't want to believe it. When we see it, it's in there. We don't want to believe it. But see, this is how you become one. This is how your soul becomes one together. This is how you're able to walk in that coat together. Is that you understand that your body is not your own. Your body, sir, belongs to your wife. And her body, ma'am, your body belongs to your husband. According to the word of God and the way God wants things to happen. And you got to figure out how to get that done. And you got to practice that and you got to work on that. Otherwise, you're going to be it's going to be hard for you to become one. And if you're not one and you're praying and you are two and you're praying, God sees you as one. So he don't answer two prayers that are together in holy matrimony or two individuals. He answered those that are on one accord. And so you wonder, why is it hard for you to come together, put your finances together, have vision together, agree on the same vehicle, agree on the, we're just talking about little stuff here, agree on the same house, agree on whether I'm going to uh, live in a certain place. It's, it's a challenge in doing that because couples don't understand that their position in Christ is that they Mm -hmm. or to yield to one another, and they are not their own. You know, in the natural, I don't care how old a child gets, the, the, the ambivocal cord is never cut. Now, it's cut in the natural, but, but so, 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 so sociological, psychologically, and emotionally, the ambivocal cord is never cut from the mother, between the mother and the child. Man, he's he, he 30, 40 years old, she's still talking about my baby. And, and so it never, and so it never gets cut. There's always a connection. There's a, there is a, there is a certain strategic, special connection there. Always, okay, always. So I need you to turn to your, to your wife or your husband and say, "Hey, baby, hey, baby. how you doing, baby?" Doing, baby? <laughs> because in a marriage relationship. He's your baby, and she's your baby. And that cord mm, that's good, that's good. never cut. Mm. Mm -mm. See, what's, what's going on there? Oh, Jesus. What's going, going on there is chemical. You got a chemical connection. Yeah. 
and it's emotional. The chemical, the chemistry, and that's the word I'm looking for. There's a chemistry there, and it's emotional. The emotional chemistry there is that we are attached by a spiritual and biblical cord that was given us at the altar. And you got to know that, and you got to know the scripture, because if you don't, you're going to grow apart rather than grow together. And you're going to become two powerful individual institutions rather than one conglomerate Fortune 500 company. Phew. With your subsidiaries, which is your children and But at the top, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you got the CFO, the CEO, and the CFO. You can't be one, you can't have two CEOs, you can't have two CFOs. One, there's room at the top for both. Husband, head of the wife. Wife, head of the kids, but she's in submissive, and she's a helpmate, and she's a whole lot of other things, too. Look, don't underestimate who you are as a wife. You're so much more. As a matter of fact, uh, you got it going on because your husband belonged to you. His body belonged to you. His mind belonged to you. Oh, somebody about to get choked here. <laughs> what he has belonged to you. The way he thinks belonged to you. The way he feels belonged to you. Where he's going, you should know. Where he's coming from, you should know. His bank account, you should know. What he's spending and not going to spend, he should know. What he makes, you should know. You don't know what he make, really. You don't know what he's doing with his money. Oh, so you got your money, he got his money. He paid these amount, these certain bills, and you pay other certain bills. Why would you do your wife like that? Why, 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 would you, why would you withhold all of that from your wife when the Bible says she belonged to you and you belong to her and you, have, and you have all these marital rights? By marriage, she has a right to know everything that you know and everything that you're doing by right, according to the Scripture. Why? Why not? Why not? Why not? And I am so tired of seeing relationships that when the husband dies, the wife don't know what to do. She hadn't done anything. She don't know how to pay bills. She don't know how to, to, how to, how to, how to regulate anything, solve anything. She don't know uh, 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 about the insurance policy, how much she got coming to her. She don't know how to run the house. She don't know how to do anything. You withheld all of that from her, and now she's got to fall in love with another man, or she's got to be taken care of by her kids, or she just got to wing it. You're supposed to be a man of God, leaving your wife in that type of situation. And it works the other way around. If you don't know how to do it, at least know about it. How, how, how do we live like that? And then all of a sudden, life comes and calamity comes, and, 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 and somebody gets sick or somebody dies, and all of a sudden, we're in a tailspin. Why are you in a tailspin? Why are your house in an uproar? Why you got to go before... Uh, the courts, and they got to decide where your stuff go, and you got a wife or a husband. Because we don't have a will or because we got stuff secretly hidden and stuffed over here and over there. See, you can't, you can't have no garden of Eve with that kind of mindset and that kind of operation, baby. Mm -mm. At best, you're going to have war after a while. War getting ready to break out after a while. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like, I'm going I'm to get your stuff, you're going to get my stuff. Uh, since our stuff ain't together, he can die if he want, I'm going to get all this stuff. <laughs> See, he won't let me drive that car, let him die. I'm going to drive the wheels off of it, baby. You should be driving it anyway. You, you see how we set ourselves up with, with foolishness and with tradition and all this, uh, and, all this uh, and I don't know another way to call it, all this crazy stuff? Where we get them ideas from? Where we get them from? You see, and people don't understand. You understand and you do what you've been exposed to. 
I ain't telling you not to love your parents, but I'm saying don't deify them. Because every time you deify your parents in front of your, your children or your spouse, you're creating a God in front of them. And the Ten Commandments said, thou shalt have no other God before me. All of us have faults and issues and so on and so forth. I would hope that we know and have experienced better than our parents. I would hope so. We're supposed to. We're supposed to evolve. We, each generation is supposed to be wiser. Each generation is supposed to be more knowledgeable. Each generation should be experiencing more of what the Word of God says and have more of what the Word of God says we should have. Each generation. So as wonderful as things are with First Lady and our, our son when he gets married, should he be experiencing even more, even better. That's how it's supposed to work. But it's our job to make sure that we, we live, live, the, live the life and also make sure that we talk about Christ Jesus. We talk about that he is the groom and we're the bride. That the husband is the groom. Christ, and the wife is the church, the bride. And so, as it says, likewise also, and there's so many I can say, likewise does have not his have exclusive right of control over his own body, but the wife has her rights. Now, this, 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 this setting is talking about sexual relationship. But how many of you know the Holy Spirit gets more out of it than just what you see on paper? Because once God gives it to us, it's on paper, but once God gives it to us, he sends it into all different directions that it needs to go in. So he's talking, so he's talking about sexual relationship, but he's also talking about everyday life stuff, too. Okay? So he, so he says, likewise, also the husband uh, does not have exclusive authority over, over, over his body, but the wife has her rights. Do not refuse and deprive and defraud each other of your due marital rights. That means that you can't say, I'm not going to do this. Matter of fact, all of us that hear this today, we are now held accountable for what we know. Now, when you don't operate, try to practice what you know, when you don't try to put forth an effort, we don't try to make the steps, when you don't try to move forward, when you don't try to move forward, to you, that's sin. And what happens when you miss the mark, that's what sin is doing, you're going to continue to have problems. As a matter of fact, your problems are probably going to get worse in that area because you refuse to believe and you refuse to act. See, a lot of people think they can hear the word and do what they want to do. No, you can't, baby. Once you hear the word, because this ain't none of my word. Matter of fact, everything you hear that I'm saying, I got to practice it too. I got to try to do it too. And so, and so it's not my word. So when God give us word, we are now on the hook. We are now responsible. We are now held accountable for practicing it. And all it's going to do is help us when you try. Baby, when you try, God is going to give you strength to do more. And when he gives you strength to do more, and you try, and you walk, he's going to give you illumination and revelation. And you're going to come into another understanding. And once you understand this, he's going to put you up another level. And when you understand that, he's going to put you up another level. And next thing you know, your relationship is going to start growing in the right direction. And stuff that you used to have, uh, uh, problems you used to have, you're not going to have those problems. And issues you used to have, you're not going to, you're not going to have those issues. And the way you used to think, your thought, life, and patterns is going to change. And you're going to find yourself talking alike, thinking alike, walking alike, loving the same stuff, loving each other, taking care of each other. You're going to be so busy trying to take care of your wife and please your wife. And he's going to be so busy trying to, she's going to be so busy trying to take care of her husband until problems don't have a chance to grow. Mm-mm. Well, get what you got going on at the same time. You got weed and feed, baby. Mm -hmm. You feeding the relationship, but you also keeping the weeds out. That's the problems and the issues and all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. 
while you're waiting on the Lord to bring the rain, the latter rain and the former rain, while you're waiting on the Lord to bless where two or three are gathered in his name, while you're waiting on the Lord to bless what y'all agree on, while you're waiting on the Lord to honor his word, no good thing will I withhold from them. Where two or three are gathered in his name, I'm in the midst. If anybody touch and agree, with two touch and agree and ask anything in my name, I'm going to give it. Let the word of God transform your mind. See, you got to get your thinking right, baby. You thinking wrong too much. You sitting around thinking wrong. We got individuals who have been married a long time. We got individuals that have been married that long. And they sitting around, they sit, they, they sitting together. <laughs> sitting together. Thinking separate. They ain't talking. They on the phones. Both of them eating a visual on the phone. They ain't talking. You sitting together and you ain't talking. So you thinking individual. If you sitting together, if you're in the same house, if her body's your body and your body's her body, and you all sitting together, won't you open your mouth and find out what you know together? Won't you open your mouth and so you can speak the same thing so that you can hash out and develop and maneuver and come together in mind, in thought, what you say. Because when you get this and this together, you're going to be able to walk together. Got too many distractions in your relationship. Your relationship is backwards because you got everything and everybody else in it. You ain't worried about his body belonging to you because you ain't worried about that because you into something else. Well, baby, well, that's what happens when you get married. All of him belongs to you. All of her belongs to you. And it also says, it comes on to say, said, look, don't be separate. I need y'all to keep me on track with time. Don't be separate. Except for when you have agreed to be separate. That's in your sexual relationship. I'm fasting. Well, you can't be fasting for a whole month. <laughs> did, y'all, did y'all talk about that? Did y'all talk about the fact that every weekend you're going to be on a fasting shut-in? Did, did y'all talk about that? Did y'all pray about that? No. Well, you can't, you can't do that on your own. Look, you can't even get mad with him saying, oh, yeah, he cutting up in front of his friend. He just showing out at church. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a cold week from Monday to Saturday. It's be a cold week, baby. Your body's not your own. Or, or you don't say nothing. You don't say nothing. You just give him that eye. He know that eye means, Lord, have mercy. I might as well find me something to do for the next two weeks. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. And so now what you've done is you, it's in the Bible. He says, do not, com- do not refute and deprive and defraud each other of your duty, of your due marital rights, except perhaps by mutual consent for a time. You decided together for a time, a short period of time. I want to add that in there. So that you may devote yourselves unhindered to prayer. He says, but after you pray, baby, resume marital relations. Why? Lest Satan tempt you to sin through your lack of restraint and sexual desire. You can't push him out the door. You can't push her out the door. You say we, we you said the shop is closed, then he's gonna go to another shop if you close the shop too long. And let me tell you this: I don't care how saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled he or she is, he has a desire, and he ain't no tambourine player. Y'all about to get me in trouble in here. So he says, to the rest I declare. We got to bring it down. 
I shall hate to stop, but we got to stop. He said, to the rest I declare, not the Lord, for Jesus did not discuss this, that if any brother has a wife who does not believe in Christ, this is very important, because some folk, they receive the Lord, they, you know, they, they, both of them were not saved when they got married, and then one got saved, or one was saved and the other one wasn't. And so now the question is, what do I do? Well, Paul says, this is what you need to do. He says, to the rest I declare, I, not the Lord, for Jesus did not discuss this, that if any brother has a wife who does not believe in Christ and she consents to live with him, he should not leave or divorce her. And if any woman has an unbelieving husband and he consents to live with her, she should not leave or divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is set apart, separated, withdrawn from heathen contamination and affiliation with the Christian people by union with his consecrated, set-apart wife. And the unbelieving wife is set apart and set through union, separated through union with her consecrated husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, unblessed, heathen, outside the Christian covenant. But as it is, they are prepared for God, pure and clean. If the unbelieving partner actually leaves, or she leaves, let him do so. In such case, the remaining brother or sister is not morally bound, but God has called us to peace. So if you got you to gotta split, that's fine, because God, he don't want us to live in chaos. We live in peace. He says, for wife, how can you be sure of converting and saving your husband? Husband, how can you be sure of converting and saving your wife? How do you know that your wife won't get saved if you live right in front of her. Because, see, you have to understand about, about, about the commandments and the roles of a husband and wife. These roles are supposed to be carried out whether you save or not. Oh, yeah, you're supposed to have respect for each other, so on and so forth. There's certain things that you're supposed to do for each other by virtue of the fact that you are married. And so if you stay in the Lord and show kindness and mercy and love and forgiveness. There are a lot of people, man, that we know over the years, their husband is now saved because the wife maintained her integrity and consecration and holiness. And likewise, time is gone. Time has run out. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate uh, your wanting to hear, your desire to hear. Because when you desire and put a demand on the word of God, God comes through. And he blesses, he sends a word that blesses everybody in the house. God bless you. We'll see you next time.